And if this I doesn't work out, you know what I'm saying? So this is what you meant when you were working late, huh? What, what are you doing here? I can't believe you throw away our marriage like this. What are you saying? This marriage is over. Oh, I'm sorry I'm so late. My boss put an urgent assignment on my desk just as I was walking out the door. You had to stay late, huh? Yeah, it was a crazy last minute thing. That's funny, because I called your office and they told me you left hours ago. Yeah, I, um, I had to pitch a client across town. Hmm. Forget it, you know? Forget it. I, uh, I'm going out. What? Don't stay up. Jet. What? Hey, it's me. I think he knows. Maybe we should call this off. No, you're right. No, you're right. There's no way he could know. I'm sorry, I'm just being paranoid. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And then she lied right to my face. It reminds me of my first wife. Whatever happened with her? Same thing is happening to you. Started coming home real late. She always had an excuse about where she was at. That's when I found out she was cheating. Jeez, I'm so sorry. Don't be. I mean, yeah, it hurt at the time, but I'm happy I found out. I don't know. I don't know. I just... I just can't imagine Danica cheating. You two been fighting recently? Now that you mention it, we have. Mm-hmm. I guess, I guess when we started talking about having kids... I mean, before that, we used to never fight. Oh, she's trying to pressure you to have a kid. I've been there, buddy. No, no, no. I'm the one who wants it. But for oh. whatever reason, she doesn't seem to. Every time I bring it up, she changes the subject. I mean, though, now I'm starting to think the real reason she doesn't want to start a family is because, because she found someone else. Look, my advice, whatever's going on, figure it out quick. If she's cheating on you, you're better off without her. How am I supposed to know? I mean, there's no way of, of proving. Sure, there is. Hire a private investigator. Have him follow her around. That's what I did with ex-wife number one. Wait, that actually works? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. If Danica is hiding something, he'll find it. Call him. Well, as requested, I followed your wife for the past few days, and um, mostly she sticks to her own routine. I did see her meeting a few times with this man. Does he look familiar? No. No, I don't recognize him. He's definitely not from her work either. Who is he? Not sure. I can't believe she's actually cheating on me. How could she? To be clear, I didn't observe any romantic interaction between them. But... But what? According to your wife's credit card statement, she booked an Airbnb for tonight. Wait, what, what, what's the address in the Airbnb? 7928 Overlook Avenue. What are you doing? Catching her in the act. How's that? Perfect, Perfect, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> okay. All right. I will burn your house down. This I doesn't work out, you know what I'm saying? So this is what you meant when you were working late, huh? Jack, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? What, what, what are you doing here? I can't believe you throw away our marriage like this. Uh, no, it's not what you think. Hey, is this your husband? I was her husband. What are you saying? 
This marriage is over. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, there's been a huge misunderstanding. No, there's no misunderstanding. I can't believe you'd do this to me, Danica. Jack, Jack, just wait. Wait, Jack, let me explain. There's, there's nothing to explain. This was all for you. What, what do you mean this was all for me? Let me explain. You see, we've been fighting more and more lately. I just didn't know what to do. So, I looked online for help. That's when I found Matthew. He's a relationship coach. For the past month, he's been trying to find a way to get us back to being us. I was gonna have you meet me tonight for a surprise romantic weekend. So you see, that's why we're here. I wanted to surprise you with a secret getaway. I'm so sorry, babe. I mean, I, I can't believe I was accusing you of cheating on me when all this time you were just trying to find a way to save our marriage. Jeez. And I'm so sorry that I ruined the surprise. I mean, I, I feel terrible, really, I do. You didn't ruin the surprise. I did. You're pregnant? Three months pregnant, to be exact. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> wait, wait, why didn't, why didn't you tell me sooner? They say you have to wait three months to be able to confirm it and... That's why I kept changing the subject every time you brought it up. I wanted to tell you so badly, I just couldn't. I'm sorry. No, don't be. Don't be sorry, I love you so much. Happy? Yes. You can't just leave us. Watch me. Marcus, we need you. Yeah, well, we don't always get what we need, do we? What are we supposed to do without you? You'll figure it out. I spent the last 15 years sacrificing. And what has it gotten me, huh? A sick wife and a loser for a son. I'm tired of it. It's time I start living life for myself. I'm done letting you two get in the way of me living the life I deserve. Deserve? We are your family. Not anymore. If you leave now, don't you ever try to come crawling back to us <laughs> like that'll ever happen. Mom. It's gonna be okay. Hey, hey, Charles, over here. Whoa, stop right there. Don't but, get any closer. But, but, but I, I know him, I know him. It's okay. Yeah. I think he's my father. <sighs> wow, look at you, son, all grown. I heard you're, uh, you're a real big shot now. Some sort of um, real estate developer? Yeah, I do okay for myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at that car you drive. I'm just so proud of you, son. <sighs> Look, uh, I'm in a little bit of a, a jam, uh, financially speaking, and uh, I figure since you have money, you might be able to help me out. How much do you need? Hundred grand. Sure. Yeah. I can do that. But not right now. I'm on my way to a meeting. 
Meet me at my house tonight, and we'll talk about what you need. <sighs> Thank you, son. I knew I could count on you. Thank you. You have my money yet? I'm just about to. Don't worry. You'll have your money by tomorrow. No later. I promise. This is your last chance. I don't need to explain what'll happen if you don't have my money tomorrow. place you got here. Thank you. Hey. It's been a long time, huh? It has? What have you been up to after all this time? Uh, to be honest, uh, things haven't gone the way I thought they would. Times have been tough. I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm sorry, too, for leaving you and your mother like that. It wasn't right. I know that now. And I'm sure sorry to hear about your mother passing. God, she was a great woman. I wasn't sure you'd heard about that. Yeah, I still keep my ear to the grapevine. I only wish I could have done more for her at the end, you know? Well, you're not here for small talk, are you? You're here for some money, right? It sure would help me out of a jam. Let me get that for you. Hundred thousand's all you need, right? It is. Thank you so much, son. Listen, before I give you this, I first need you to tell me what else you heard about Mom and I after you left. Oh, um, not much. I'd hear things every now and now and then, but nothing too specific. Well, let me fill you in then. You see, when you left. You took all but $100 with you. Which meant mom had to give up her treatments just to put food on the table. I had to work two jobs, one before school and one after, in order to help us keep the house. But even then, that wasn't enough. Stopping her treatment, combined with the stress of our situation, landed mom in the hospital weeks at a time. Her condition worsened over the next few years and each hospital stay only added to our growing mountain of debt. When she passed away, we were over $300,000 in debt. And the months of not paying rent finally caught up to me. I lost the house. I had to live on the streets, going to school during the day and collecting cans at night. After living on the streets for two years, I landed my first job. It took me four years of hard work to finally pay off all that debt. And another five to build my business what it is today. I'm so sorry that you had to go through all that, son. I know I wasn't there for you then, but I'm here now. You're here now? What, what makes you think I need you now? What does that mean? Where were you when mom was dying, huh? And where were you when I was working three jobs to pay off all of our debts? That's when I needed you most and you weren't there. So I ask again, what makes you think I need you now? I, uh, I don't know what to say, son. That's because there's nothing to say. Because you know I don't need you. Not anymore. Now, wait a second. I supported you for 15 years. 
I deserve something for that, don't I? Deserve? Yes, deserve. I'm still your father, after all. <laughs> a father is someone who's there when it counts. You weren't. So for all I know, I don't have a father. <sighs> so what? You're not gonna help me out now? I need that money. It's like you said the day you left. We don't always get what we need. Daddy, come see this. Okay, son, I'll be right there. I'm just walking this man out. I have a grandson? No, you don't. Come on, son. Let me just meet him. Son, come on. Charles, Charles! I finally told him, Mom, you can rest easy now. Those clothes make you look really fat. Wow. Your wrinkles are really bad. You should use some cover-up to hide those age spots. You're really gonna eat all of that? Well, I was planning to. What happened to you? You used to be so beautiful, then you gained all this weight. It's gross. turned blue. What does that mean? It means we're having a baby. <laughs> Just like we've always talked about. No, I never talked about wanting a baby. Of course you did. No, I didn't. I'm not ready to have a baby right now. I know it's scary, but you're gonna be a great father. You need to get rid of it. What? We are not having that baby. I am not getting rid of it. What are you doing? I can't do this anymore. What does that mean? It means I'm leaving, Molly. I've been trying to pretend that things are good with us for a while now, but they're not. And adding a baby to the mix just makes things worse. Our baby needs a father. I need you. Then I guess you better find a new father. Because it won't be me. Oh, please don't leave. Please, please don't leave. Oh. Victor leaves his family behind to start a new life. He started dating a younger woman and began going out more and more. But the more time he spent whining and dining his new, young girlfriend, the more his performance at work suffered. And he eventually lost his job. Being unemployed and broke meant Victor could no longer afford the fancy nights out with his new girlfriend. Which meant soon, he had no girlfriend at all. Then one day, he runs into someone he hadn't seen in a long time. Molly? Molly, is that really you? Victor? Wow, you look amazing. Stunning, actually. Wish I could say the same. You noticed. Yeah, well, it's been a tough year since we split up. You mean since you left me? Look, I lost my job and lost my apartment, but Things are gonna turn around for me, any day now. Are you living in your car? It's 
It's only temporary. Well, it was nice seeing you, Victor. Wait, Molly. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, and I realized that I made a big mistake walking out on you. And us meeting like this, I mean, it's a sign. I want to give this another shot. This? What is this? Us. You and I. The happy couple. Oh, Victor, it is too late for that. No, it's never too late as long as two people really love... Is everything okay, Molly? Yes, everything is fine. Honey, could you put the baby in the car seat? I'll be right there. No problem, honey. <laughs> ah, I see. You had to go marry some rich guy. Actually, that's not at all what happened. I'm the breadwinner in this relationship. You see, at first I blamed myself for what happened to our relationship. I spent countless hours playing the what if game. What if I had lost weight? What if I had worn the clothes you preferred? What if I did my makeup the way you wanted? I was so determined to blame myself that I couldn't see the truth. Not until a man appreciated me for who I truly am. Flaws and all. The truth? That I wasn't the problem in this relationship, Victor. You were. You spent so much time tearing me down, making me feel bad about myself and very little time building me up, supporting me, loving me unconditionally. And despite everything you did to me, I have to thank you. For what? For giving me the most beautiful daughter whom I adore and for showing me the kind of man I do not want in either of our lives. Wait, at least let me meet my daughter. You owe me that much. A baby needs her father. You're the one who said that. I don't owe you anything, Victor. And besides, my daughter already has a wonderful father. It's just not you. Look what just came in. It's the new Nike Dior's. It's the only pair we have. And the commission on them is insane. Wow, these look really nice. <laughs> if anyone's gonna sell these, it's going to be me. No offense. No offense. Excuse me. Hi. Are these the new Dior Nikes? Uh, this is a $15,000 pair of shoes. Might be a little over your budget. Plus, we only have a size 10 left. Yeah, well, that's uh, actually my size. Would you mind if I try them on? Uh, look, I'm not trying to be rude. I just don't want to waste my time. I mean, we have a clearance. You know what? It's no problem at all. You can absolutely try these on. I'll grab some nylon socks for you, okay? What are you doing? Why would you let him try those on? He clearly can't afford those. Well, appearances can be misleading. You shouldn't be so quick to judge. Look, I know who buys and who doesn't. He's gonna try them on, take a picture for his Instagram, leave like they all do. Just stop. These are so nice. By any chance you wouldn't happen to have some water? My mouth is a little parched. No! Actually, I don't. And can you please not touch these? I need to keep them clean for the next customer. You know, someone who can actually afford them. Excuse me. Hi, how you doing? Uh, do you have the new limited edition Dior Nikes? They're the ones that just came out. Oh, uh, hi, sir. Yeah, yes, we do. Uh, but it's only a size 10. Oh, that's perfect. That's actually my size. Uh, may I? Yeah. Hey. It's, that's great. I mean, do you want to try them on? I'd, I'd be glad to help you. No, that won't be necessary. I'm just going to uh, buy them. This is great. Hey, uh, Beautiful. I mean, I can take these to the front for you, and would you like anything? You need water or something? Yeah, water would be great. Uh, thank right. you. Yes, yes, 
I'll take these up front and I'll box them up for you. I got the socks. Thank you so much for waiting. Here you Actually, are. you won't be needing those. I'm selling them to this fine gentleman right here. Is that right? That is right. And I cannot wait to put these babies on. Ching. Sorry. Great. I'll take these to the front and box them up for you, sir. Next time. Take my advice and don't try to sell to someone who can't afford expensive things. Maybe then you'll actually sell some shoes. I'm so sorry about that. That's I... uh, okay. It's not your fault. Uh, well, we do have some new shoes that we just got in that you might like. Would you like to see them? Sure. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Here's the water, my man. Thank you. <laughs> oh. These shoes are gonna look great with your outfit. I mean, you've already got the sick threads. Now you got the kicks to go with it. Everyone's gonna know exactly how much money you have. Exactly. I mean, that's the goal. And you know what? You get it. I knew I liked you. Here, let's put it on this card. Got it. So it's going to be 15,678 on the credit card. So these over here are imported from Italy. They are handmade. I think they would look stunning on you. Oh, by the way, may I offer you some water? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, the store really needs some more nice people like you. Oh, thank you. You know, I just try to treat everyone the same no matter what. Anyways, I'll be right back. All right. Hmm. It didn't go through, that's odd. Um, l let me try again. Sometimes these meters don't work. Is there a problem? It's still not going through. Uh, do, do you have a, another card? No, it's my only card. Can you please try it again? Okay. Hey, look, I really need these shoes. Just want to take a picture, post it on Instagram, you know, so people think I got money. Look, I'm sorry, but it, it's still not going through. But it, it, don't worry, don't worry, you can pay with cash. Right, there's a bank right next no, to you. No, no, I don't have that kind of cash in my bank account. I mean, that's why I use the credit card. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, you're wearing an Armani suit. You have to have the money. Hey, look, I, I borrowed this from a, a friend just so I could take a picture in it. Do you still think I could try these on? At least I can get a pic for the gram. So, super nice. Oh, hey, you're back. How'd it go? Didn't. His credit card got declined. Took a photo and he left. Ugh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll buy them. Oh my gosh, really? I mean, yes, of course. Uh, let me go box everything up for you. Look, wait, no offense. But if my customer's credit card didn't go through, there's no way yours is going to. Credit card? Never said anything about a credit card. I'll actually be paying cash. Where did you get that money? Well, I actually own my own million dollar business. I'm just coming from the gym, which is why I look like this. Oh, by the way, I'll take a size 10 in these as well, <laughs> if that's OK. Yes, of course. Uh, please take a seat, and I'll box everything up, OK? Thank you. Hey, remember that Appearances can be misleading. Don't be so quick to judge. And maybe next time, you'll sell some shoes. Oh, come on. What kind of inconsiderate jerk brings a baby to a fancy restaurant? Let's not let it ruin our evening. Isn't this wine lovely? Yeah. Ooh. Can you believe the nerve in this woman? Everybody here is paying a lot of money to have a fine dining experience. And here she comes, as if this place is an Applebee's. Please don't let us sit near us. Please don't let us sit near us. Please don't let us sit near us. Mm, of course. Just my luck. Excuse me. Could you please find them a different table, preferably as far from us as possible? I'm sorry, sir, but this is the only available table we have for them. I'm telling you, this baby is going to be loud, annoying, and as inconsiderate as its mother. I mean, 
Really? How am I supposed to eat with all this racket? Who in the world thinks a baby belongs in a place like this? I'm telling you, the more decent people like us let things like this slide, the worse it'll get. Not so loud. You don't want to wake the baby. Oh, so I'm supposed to accommodate a rude woman and her brat? That is not what I said. Well, I'm not the one who brought an infant into a fancy restaurant, hmm? She should be the one accommodating us by leaving. Daniel, please, lower your voice. What, I'm not supposed to talk on our date? Come on, are you kidding me, Rita? If the baby doesn't like the noise, then its mother should not have brought it here in the first place. Okay, here we go. Just like I predicted. No, 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 no. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. Everything's okay. No, it's not okay. It's very, very rude. I'm terribly sorry. She's usually very quiet. If you were truly sorry, you would take your bundle of noise and get out of here. She'll settle down if we keep our voices down a little while. She'll fall right back to sleep. So I'm supposed to quiet down? You really have no respect for the rest of the world, do you? I beg your pardon? You heard me. You could have just stayed home. But instead, you decided to come to a fancy restaurant with your annoying baby and ruin everybody else's night. Don't call my baby annoying. Lady, are you even listening to your baby? Everybody in this place is annoyed by her. There's no rule against having a child here. There shouldn't have to be a rule. It's just plain common sense and decency. Daniel! Come on, Rita, please. You quiet your baby down, or I'll have them kick the both of you out of here. Some people just have no respect for others. OK, OK, I see you're hungry. Thank you. Oh, come on. This has gone too far. What is it now? Just look. At least the baby's not crying. That's a good thing, right? Good? People are trying to eat here, and she's exposing herself. <sighs> she's not exposing herself. Miss, miss, right over here, please, right now. Is everything OK, sir? No, everything is definitely not OK. Do you see what's happening here? Uh, I'm just trying to settle my child down. This is supposed to be a fine dining establishment, not a strip club. I'm not sure what you would like me to do, sir. What I want you to do is to throw this woman out for public indecency. Public indecency? Are you crazy? You know, we've been trying to sit here politely, you know, trying to ignore her, but this is just going too far. Ignore me. Right. All you've done since I arrived is complain. And yet you haven't gotten the hint. Sir, please don't make a scene. Tell her that. She's the one spoiling everyone's evening with her loud prat. Let me speak to the owner. I'll be right back. Please do. I'm sure the owner will agree that this is no place for a baby. <sighs> Can we just try to enjoy our meal? I mean, the food looks delicious. How am I going to eat with that happening next to me? OK, I've just had about enough of you picking on this poor woman. I mean, can't you just leave it be? You're getting mad at me? You're being extremely rude. She's the one being rude. I'm not trying to be rude, sir. Well, you failed, just like probably you will fail at being a mother. Excuse me? That's enough, Daniel. I'm calling it as it is. Anyone who's as inconsiderate as to bring a baby into a fancy restaurant is definitely way too selfish to be a good mother. Those are just facts. <clears throat> I spoke with the owner, and she agrees. This is no place for a baby. Thank you. Finally, somebody gets it. Bye-bye, lady. Oh, I'm sorry if you misunderstood me. The owner is not asking her to leave. She's asking you to leave. Since you're the only adult here acting like a baby. 
Wait, what? I mean, you're kicking me out? That's ridiculous. Her stupid baby's the one making all the noise. I demand to speak to the owner right now. Well, I'm the owner of this establishment. Is there a problem? Just great. No wonder why you're siding with that woman. The whole world is going crazy on us here tonight. You have been asked politely to leave. I suggest you do, or I will be forced to call the police. Yeah, 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 whatever, okay? I've done nothing wrong, okay? This is crazy. Thank you for ruining our night. I'm just here to have a nice meal. And you've been nothing but loud, overbearing, and rude. If you wanted to have a nice meal, you should have left your baby at home. And how am I supposed to do that? Huh? I'm a single mother who works two jobs to support myself and my child. Babysitters are expensive, and tonight's a special night. Not only is it the first night that I've had off in months, it's also my birthday. I just wanted to treat myself to a nice meal and have a wonderful evening with my baby, and you've done nothing but insult me and my child. So, as far as I'm concerned, you're the one who should have stayed home. Okay. Come on, Rita. Let's go. I'm not going with you. What? Come on, don't be ridiculous. The night has already been bad enough as it is. Yes, it's been bad because of you, Daniel. You clearly showed your true colors. And frankly, I don't want to date a man like you. <laughs> Would you mind if I join you two? Birthday girl shouldn't be eating all alone. Of course. That is, if you don't mind, a fussy baby. Of course not. Oh, she is adorable. Ladies, this meal is on the house. And I am going to check with the chef about a special birthday dessert. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. There you go, birthday boy. Oh, you look so handsome. Thanks. Let's go. <laughs> I am so excited to take you out on a birthday dinner, but I don't think I'll need my jacket. It is just so hot. Wait, what are you doing? No, put, put your jacket back on. But it's hot out. I don't think I'll need it. Look how big your stomach looks in that dress. I'm not going to be seen with you looking like that. Wait, you don't like the dress? I bought it just for your birthday dinner. The dress isn't the problem, Ashley. Your weight's the problem. Put the jacket back on and let's go. James? Roy! What's up, man? How you been? I've been good. We were just about to have dinner. Oh, I don't think you've met my girlfriend, Violet. Wow, this is your girlfriend? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> man, your girl is hot. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, man. What about you? <laughs> you know, it's actually really funny. <laughs> I... Hey, baby. Sorry I'm late. Had to get a little surprise. Oh, hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Roy, this is my girlfriend, Violet. Oh, nice to meet you. You are so pretty. Thank you. So, is this your... Girlfriend. Friend. <laughs> She's just a friend. And actually, we're running really late to something, so uh, we gotta go. It's nice seeing you guys. Nice seeing you. Hey, why'd you tell him I was just a friend? Because Look, I don't want him knowing that I'm dating a... Big girl. <laughs> so, I got you something for your birthday. Okay, so I've got a burger and a salad. I'm assuming the salad is for you. No, she actually got the burger. But she should be eating the salad. My apologies. Enjoy. Thank you. Anyway, like I was saying, here's your gift. Tickets to Hawaii? Yeah, I booked us a little getaway. Swim trunks? Mm-hmm. Keep digging. And a bathing suit? For us to wear at the beach. 
you're going to be wearing this? Yeah, why? What's wrong? You don't like it? No! I don't want to be seen with you in a bathing suit. Maybe if you weren't so big, it wouldn't be such a problem. You know, it's not about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. I give you compliments. I make you feel special. I get you thoughtful gifts. Isn't that enough? No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. It's over, Ashley. Look, I need to be with someone who isn't twice my size. And you know, maybe, maybe, if you ate salads instead of burgers, you wouldn't look like such a whale. James breaks up with Ashley and leaves her there heartbroken. Before long, James moves on and hits it off with the skinnier girl. Everything seems to be going great in the beginning. That is, until he begins to notice that his new girlfriend doesn't treat him like Ashley did. She would never compliment him. She was never excited to be seen with him and would never care about being thoughtful. He started missing the way Ashley used to treat him. A few months went by, and then one day, James happened to run into Ashley. Ashley? James? <laughs> wow, it's been a minute. How have you been? Um, I've been better. My girlfriend and I just broke up. If I'm being honest, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. Really? Yeah. Like, I miss the way you used to make me feel. And I was thinking... Hey, baby. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I got you a little surprise. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm Arthur. Hey. Is she your... My girlfriend. And you are? Um, I'm the... He's just a friend. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, it's kind of hot out. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sure you want to wear this jacket? <laughs> You're right. Hey, let me take that for you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Hmm. You look stunning in this dress. <laughs> Let's get going. Ooh, absolutely. Uh, wait. You're not embarrassed to be with a girl that's bigger than you? Are you serious? No way. First of all, it's not about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. And besides, there's more to love. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet you, friend. button. This blouse is too small. Or you're just too big. If you would just work out with me like I told you, I'm sure it would fit. I'll just find something else to wear. What are you doing? I'm just getting something to eat. You're going to eat a candy bar when you can't even fit into your clothes? I'm running late for work and I have to have something. You're unbelievable. If you would just take my advice, your clothes would actually fit and you wouldn't look like that. What is that supposed to mean? You used to look good and take care of yourself like this woman. But now you've just completely let yourself go. <laughs> oh my. Great. Crying like you always do. I don't have time for this. I gotta go train a client. 
nine, ten. Very good. Thanks. I felt good. Oh, you look great. That waist is coming right in. I think so. Mm -hmm. Jesse? Vanessa? What are you doing here? I came to work out and surprise you. This is what I walk into? It's not what it looks like. Who is she, Jesse? She's just a client. Just a client? Wow. That's not what you were saying last night when we were in bed together. I didn't mean it like that. Look, what did you expect to happen anyway, huh? You've gained so much weight. I'm just not attracted to you anymore. How could you do this to me? After all these years? I'm sorry. But I need a partner that looks good. Not someone that just let herself go. <laughs> I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> Jesse quickly forgets all about his ex-wife. He moves on with his new girl and starts having a really good time with her. Vanessa, meanwhile, slowly starts to get over the breakup. She's now determined to lose the weight that she put on and look better than she's ever looked before. Jesse, on the other hand, walks into the gym one day, only to find his new girl cheating on him with another trainer. He can't believe what just happened to him. As Jesse's life starts going downhill, Vanessa's life starts going uphill. She throws away all the junk food and candy bars that are inside the house. She decides to start eating healthy. Vanessa also starts exercising and pushing herself to get back in shape. She never gives up and keeps on pushing herself. A few months go by and now Jesse's depressed and all alone. So he starts to binge eat and gain a lot of weight. Jesse completely lets himself go. And then one day, he happens to run into Vanessa. Vanessa? Oh my God, you look amazing. You've lost so much weight, I could barely recognize you. Hey, Jesse. Can I be honest? I can't stop thinking about you. I don't understand. What happened to that girl you were with? Oh, um, she cheated on me with one of the other trainers. Anyway, do you think maybe we could try to start over? Your babe? Everything all right? It's fine. I'm sorry, I don't think it would work out. You see, I need a partner who looks good. Not someone who's let himself go. <laughs> Ooh, what anime is that? Oh, it, no, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just a silly hobby. <laughs> you know, I always wondered what it would be like to ride in a Rolls Royce. Oh, no, uh, actually, this is, this is not, this is, uh, <laughs> You were saying? Um, what are you doing on Christmas Eve? I guess hanging out with you. Yeah. I'm Holly, by the way. Drew. Yeah, maybe I can... Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Hello? So sorry, sir. Yes, right this way. Yeah. Hey, Holly, why don't you go over there and make us some protein shakes? You know, for the trainers. Got to take care of my boys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hey, I just came to say sorry about yesterday. For lying to me? I didn't lie. Look, okay, look, look, look. I'm not some mega millionaire who owns a Rolls Royce. I don't live in a mansion or have some lavish lifestyle. I'm a chauffeur. I make 26 an hour and I have a one bedroom apartment. But I'd still like to take you out on a date <laughs> if, if, if you're willing to give me a second chance. You first tried to impress me with a car that isn't yours, and now you're going with some sob story? I never said it was my car. You certainly never said it wasn't. Oh, wow. You, you, you're giving me a hard time, and you're, you're on some sugar daddy website. Don't act like you're some angel either, Holly. The only reason you're interested in me is because you thought I'd drive a nice car. You were just looking for another rich guy so you could get a Gucci bag. That's pathetic. Hey, watch it. You don't know anything about me. You're right. I don't. And I don't want to either. Let's just pretend we never met. Good. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Didn't you eat with your dad? No. You didn't feed her? No. You asked me to watch her while you were at work. You didn't say anything about feeding her. You're her dad, Gabe. I only asked you to watch her because I'm at work and my mom can't. Don't you think- I don't need another one of your lectures. All right, this is why I left you. If you can't appreciate me, then don't ask me to watch her next time. Let's go get you something to eat, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, come on. Uh-oh. Hi. 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 We're gonna go get some food? Yeah. Yeah? You're really hungry? Yeah. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Look, I didn't know you had a daughter. Yeah, like I said, you don't know anything about my life. You're right, I don't. And, and, and I am really sorry about what I said earlier. Who was that guy? Some deadbeat dad that barely helps with anything. Hey, pop your hood. I'll pull my car around. I'm sorry, too. You were right. I am looking for a rich guy, but not by choice. My original goal was to be a personal trainer. I got my certification in everything. But when I asked my boss for a promotion, he said no. Because nobody here wants a female trainer. I didn't know what else to do. With the $15 an hour that I make here, I could barely pay rent. I haven't even been able to get a present for my baby girl for Christmas. So that's the reason I, you know, I signed up for that site. I figured 
getting paid to go on dates beats my baby girl being hungry, you know? I actually think I have a solution for both of our problems. Okay, so all I have to do is act like we're together to make your family happy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And, and I'll, I'll pay you as soon as we get back. I don't know why you care so much about what your family thinks, but I guess it's not my problem. I get nervous when flying, so I'm just gonna try and sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can be a bit, uh... Drew, welcome home. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Oh, and who's this? <laughs> I thought you were joking when you said you were gonna bring a girl home. Oh, and how pretty are you? Would you look at that? I'm Drew's mom, Lisa Johnson. What's your name, sweetie? I'm Holly. It's oh, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Holly. Uh, Holly... Don't, don't... Don't give her your full name. My mom's a little investigator. I am not. Stop it. Don't listen to him, please. Come on in, guys. Yeah, just send the file. I'll take a look at it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We need to iron this out before the new year. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> there he is. Hi, right, son. Good to see you. Wow. I'm surprised we didn't have to buy you a ticket this year. Being a valet pays better than I thought. <laughs> I'm actually a chauffeur. Is there a difference? <laughs> oh, guess what? Your brother could use the show for his career has really taken off. He hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my other son, Craig. Uh, he's flying in tonight. Mm -hmm. Studied psychiatry at Harvard. Top of the class. <laughs> he published a book that made it to the New York Times bestseller list. You can have it all. How to be smart, successful, and have a happy marriage. He is amazing. Th that's a lot. Yeah, well, honey, I'm sure you guys are tired, so why don't you go on back, Drew? We set up your old room. Go on back and relax while I finish dinner. All right? All right, All right. thank you. <laughs> oh, you can leave those here, honey. I'll take them back for you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Oh, oh, please, uh, ignore those. <laughs> you got real talent, Drew. I don't understand why you haven't done anything with this. That was a dream. It was to, you know, go to art school and be an animator. Uh, reality, that's, that's just one big waste of time. Is that what your family tells you? You need to relax. You're overreacting, Chloe. No, I'm not. You're always trying to gaslight me, Cred. That's my brother. Doesn't seem like that happy couple on the cover of that book. Seems a bit hypocritical. Welcome to my family. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call Drew my boyfriend yet, at least, but um, yeah, that's how we met outside of my gym. That's cute. And which gym was it again? Oh, um, it's the one that's in between. Really, Chloe? You're not gonna put none on my plate? If you wanted some, you could have just asked. Do you ask me to pay the bills? No. I just do them. Oh. Oh. Is everything OK, Dad? I'm just uh, putting out fires as always. Could have wait till after dinner. It's Christmas Eve, you know? They, they can't expect you to respond now, right? <laughs> See? 
You know what your problem is? You don't know about work ethic. When I was becoming a VP, do you think I took off weekends and holidays? No. What about your brother? How did he become a successful bookseller? Huh? Did you work nine to five? Nah, more like 24 seven. Exactly. If you want to be successful, you have to work hard. Something you know nothing about. Drew works hard. Yeah, if, if he isn't driving his clients around, he is always working on his art. Oh, don't even get me started about that giant waste of time. <laughs> so that's what you're doing now, little bro? You're driving people around? What's so funny? <laughs> Let me paint a picture for you. I am a VP of a major corporation. Your brother is a best-selling author. You are a valet. Don't you see how that's kind of funny? Now, you know what? Maybe I should get you a copy of my book. You could learn to think it too, man. That's a great idea, Craig. I'm sure Drew could learn a lot from your book. And you know, there's a few chapters in there about relationships. Yeah. Maybe if you read it, you can actually get Holly to be your girlfriend. OK, you know what? That is enough. What is wrong with all of you? You're his family. Don't you care about how what you're saying is affecting him? Guess we know who wears the pants in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Even more reason Drew needs to read my book. You know what, Holly? You should read it too. I bet you'll love it. OK, listen here, Harvard. I'd rather get relationship advice from a fortune cookie than your worthless bestseller. And you're not fooling me with your smiling cover and your, like, fancy degree. And you're not fooling anyone either, Missy. Is this you? Is she <gasps> your daddy dating website? Are you investigating me? No, 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 no. You don't get to flip this around on me. Are you paying for her to be here? No, no, I, uh, sure. Drew. Do not lie to us. Wow. This is good. Not only are you insulting me, a doctor, you using men to fund your little shopping sprees? Aren't you going to say anything? Wait, Holly, no, wait. Well, we knew him bringing a girl here was just too good to be true. Too good to be true, ma. <laughs> Holly, Holly, please, please, wait, wait. I stood up for you, and you just sat there and watched them attack me. Oh, no, no, no. It's not that I didn't want to defend you. It... It's that I... I don't know how to stand up to my family. I've, n I've never even stood up for myself. You want to know why I've never shown my heart to anyone? It's because my family is constantly drilling into me that it's a waste of time and that it will never amount to anything. They, 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 they've, they've always called my dreams a joke. You know, my, my mom, she constantly, she constantly makes me feel like, like no one will ever date me. And then my dad, he makes me feel like a failure. And then they both, they constantly compare me to my brother. It's been like that since I remember. You see, when we were kids, my parents were always so proud of Craig. The fridge was covered in his accomplishments. But when it came to anything I did, they never cared. They only focused on my weakness. My parents were always into the sports he'd play and the extracurriculars he did. Rather than caring about anything I was good at, all they do is rave about him. And as if things weren't already bad enough, after Craig got into Harvard, they got even worse. All the attention would be on him times 10. 
And I, I remember constantly wondering why I wasn't good enough. So you see, it's been like that since I can remember. And I thought, I thought maybe bringing you here could change things. Why was I wrong? Just like my art. How can you possibly see your art as a failure? You know, I never even got into art school. Like, they never wrote me back after I applied. Okay, but besides that, has anyone other than your family ever told you your art is bad? No, I, I haven't shown anyone else. I thought about, you know, posting it online, but no. But <laughs> because you're worried about what the world would think? You're worried about your family? I mean... Drew, do you have any idea how good this is? It's amazing. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Hey, when I first met you, you drew Zenitsu, right? You know anime? Are you kidding me? I'm obsessed. I mean, to be honest, it's one of the things that interested me even more than your car. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Zenitsu is a super talented and strong dragon slayer, right? Mm hmm What's his character flaw? Um, he's, he considers himself useless, mm -hmm. low self-esteem. Yes, and that's just like you and your art. You're so talented, but you don't see it because of this narrative that your family has told you. That's why I think it's time for you to finally stand up for yourself. It, it's just as, as easier said than done. No, it's not. Why didn't you stand up for yourself when your boss told you you couldn't be a personal trainer? Yeah, maybe you're right. I should have. But we're talking about you right now. Would you rather spend the rest of your life worrying about your family's approval or going after your dreams? What are you doing? Posting about how amazing your artwork is on Instagram. If you're not gonna do it, I will. Um. Check out how amazing my friend Drew's artwork is. Oh, please, please, please don't. Too late. I already posted it. Check it out. Mm. Oh, look. It's already got a comment. Mm. He's so talented. You got a gift, Drew. Don't waste it because you're worried about other people's approval. It's time for you to finally stand up for yourself. Because if you don't stand up for yourself in life, no one else ever will. Sometimes I wonder if he's even really our son. Oh, hey, little bro. I got a book for you, man. And I signed it. Consider it your Christmas present. And you may want to skip to chapter three. It's all about finding the right partner, not some cheap girl for hire. That's enough. I'm not going to let you talk to me and Holly like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holly and I speak proper English. You know, it's kind of ironic that you always want to give the world advice when your own marriage is in shambles. No, it's not. Bro, all you and Chloe do is argue. So you, you treat her more like your servant than your wife. Stop trying to sell this picture-perfect life to the world. In reality, it's just one big lie. At least he doesn't have to pay for his girl to be here. You know, moving forward, son, I'm going to find a very nice girl for you. Stop talking about Holly like that, Mom. You don't know her. Why would I trust you to play matchmaker? You're the one who pressured Craig into this unhappy marriage. Hey, watch your tone, son. I mean, you should talk. You drive people around for a living. When you become successful, then you get to give advice. Success, you, you having success does not mean having money, Dad. Like, you, you, you can't even put your phone down for more than five seconds to enjoy our Christmas Eve dinner. 
Working 24-7 is not success, Dad. It's prison. If I knew you were going to be ungrateful and let you waste your time in art school. Yeah, well, maybe we should have. What are you talking about? You weren't rejected from art school. We hid your acceptance letter because we didn't want you to waste your life with those silly doodles. Yet, you managed to do that anyway. Whoa. The only waste of time was coming here for dinner. You guys take care, all right? Holly and I are leaving. Come on, let's go, Holly. Drew. Hey, Drew, you want the book? Still? Hey. I am so proud of you for standing up for yourself. Thanks. Now it's your turn. Hey, Holly, once you get done cleaning, uh, make us some protein shakes, all right? Actually, you can make them yourself. Because I'm quitting. What? What's this? My resignation. I'm going to apply to this other gym that has lots of female trainers. Maybe they'll see my worth since you clearly can't. It's not Planet Fitness, is it? They've been taking all my clients. Taking my staff, too. Oh. Can't have them stealing my... Look, 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 just, just wait a second. Let's talk about this. Uh, please, don't, don't go. <clears throat> look, look, Holly, Holly. What's it going to take to make you stay? Please. So? So? Your plan worked. I got promoted to trainer. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> and guess what? Thanks to you, check it out. I just got an offer to be a full-time animator at Disney. I guess they, they saw my art online ever since the Instagram's been growing, so they reached out. And... Can you believe it? I didn't need art school after all. That's amazing, Drew. <laughs> You're going to do incredible things. <laughs> Well, um, I gotta go. I gotta pick up my daughter. Uh, actually, I was, I was hoping I could come with you. I, I, I actually, uh, I got an early Christmas gift for her. I just wanted to give it to her. And, and if you guys aren't busy, maybe we could go out to dinner. Yeah, my treat, of course, just, you know, as a thank you for believing in me. I would like that a lot, actually. And we could split the check. You're not the only one with a new job. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. I'll send you the address. OK, I'll see you there. Bye. There, honey, it's OK. But mom, my marriage is over. My career is over. Everybody's going to think I'm a big joke. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, son. Don't be a snowflake. Winners, don't cry. What? What? Since when did Drew get 20,000 followers on his Instagram page? <laughs> oh, it's okay. Shh, 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 shh. There I am, just chilling on my yacht. Who walks over? Elon Musk. No. I swear. And I'm like, hey, buddy. Ah! That's me. That's me. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh my goodness, Jazz. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we didn't know if that was you at first, but now we're freaking out. Can we have a picture? Of course, yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. When you said that your daughter was in the music, I thought you meant karaoke. No, she's my little superstar. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. So anyway, what were we talking about? Elon. So I tell Moss. How many uh, No way! A record label just emailed me about signing me. They said my bonus can be up to $100,000. Wait, did you just say $100,000? Uh-huh. No way. That is incredible. It's all happening so fast. Should I take it? I don't want to do the wrong thing. I'm not sure. I mean, you're very smart. But you are still so young. 
I think we should get a manager. You know, Jasmine, I used to be a financial advisor to some of the richest people in the world. Like Winfrey, Bezos, Gates. Oh, that's right. You shared the stories with me. Wait, show her the pictures you showed me. Oh, yeah. This is my favorite one. Oh, cool. Who is that? Branson. Sir Richard Branson, founder of Virgin. He had his own record label. Okay. Look, the, look, the point is, is that I know the industry fairly well. And if you'd like, I could take care of the business side for you. What a great idea. Mike should be your manager. It's like fate. And you're in between jobs right now, right? Yeah, I'm just looking at my options. I got about seven offers right now. I'm just deciding which one I want to take. But I'd much rather be helping you two. Um, maybe I should try things first myself and just see how it goes. Yeah, OK. Oh, yeah. You could do that. But I'd be careful. They might seem nice at first, but people aren't always who they pretend to be. Some are just wolves in sheep's clothing. And boy, do I know how to spot a wolf. Mike's right. You need an adult with experience. At least take him with you. All right, I guess. Jasmine, mm -hmm. trust me. I know how business and money works. I mean, I take millionaires, make them billionaires. I'm sorry, sir. Eric. It seems your card has declined. What? I deactivated this one. I'm waiting for the Black American Express card, and it's taking forever. It's okay, it's okay, I've got oh. it. Here you go. Thank you. Keep the change. Wow. That's talent. <laughs> you can definitely sing. You give me Amy Winehouse vibes. Mm. Right. Let me ask you a question, though. Where do you get your inspiration from? My dad. After he passed away, I turned to music and singing as an escape, and it really helped me through a lot. Oh, that's really touching, and I'm so sorry to hear about your father. You know, I think this would be an excellent time to talk about the advance. You know, what the total sum overall will be. Right. Well, we can definitely start talking about that. We usually start our new artists off with a $75,000 advance for their debut album. Then you would also get 30% for stream revenue and 25% for concert ticket sales. That sounds... A little disappointing. Here's our counter offer. We take some off of the back end and uh, put more money up front. You know, shave down the stream, and the ticket revenue, you know, and just up the advance. Um, so just to be understanding, you want to get paid more now and make less later. Yeah. Can you give us a sec? Sure. Why would we do that? Look, I see this all the time. They shortchange you up front, and then they say that you're going to make all this money in the long run. But the thing is, is that most new artists fail. So you're not going to make the money that these executives projected. You think I'm going to fail? No. Look, all I'm saying is better to have a bird in the hand than two in the bush. You know what I'm saying? No. Jasmine, you have to trust me. It's going to be good for both of us. It's going to be good for you. For you. OK. We'll do it. Fantastic. So we can do 125K up front, but then we're gonna have to take down the stream revenue to 20% and the concert ticket sales will go down to 15%. Which, to be transparent, means she'll make a lot less in the long run if she's as successful as we think she'll be. Perfect. This is great. Oh, and by the way, since she's underage, I wanna set up a trust fund that I can manage. Only her legal guardian can do that. And you're just Jasmine's mom's boyfriend, correct? Jasmine's manager. But no worries. I will make sure that her mom is on board. Mom, 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 look, my first
first check just came. Oh my goodness, I've never seen this much money in a check before. This is incredible. And I already know what I'm gonna do with it first. I'm gonna put it toward a new house for you. Oh honey, that is so sweet, but don't do that. You shouldn't be spending your money on me. But you deserve it. It can be a modest house. <laughs> I hate to butt in, but I have to agree with your mom. You know, you don't want to spend all your money at once. You don't want to end up like MC Hammer. <laughs> the can't touch this guy? He made a bunch of hits, spent all of his money, went bankrupt. There's a long list of artists like that. Look, I'm going to tell you something that sounds boring, but you want to invest in savings and bonds. Mike's right. You need to do the responsible thing. Hmm. And don't worry. Look, when your investments start to gain interest, that's when you start spending. And with my help, you're going to be making more money than you ever dreamed. Mm -hmm. Modest house. You're going to have a mansion, Rolls Royce, spending sprees, your own personal chef. I mean, that sounds pretty cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, then let me set up the bank account and get this ball rolling. Um, can we talk in private real quick? Yeah. Mike, do you mind? No. Oh, thanks. What's up, baby? Are you sure this is a good idea? You're putting a lot of trust in someone you've only been dating for a few months. Of course I trust him. He makes financial decisions for a living. And he got you a higher up front, after all. I guess. I just I feel like this sort of thing should stay in the family. He knows what he's doing. Give him a chance. Mike. Oh. Um, you can open the account if you think that's the wise thing to do. I think it's the best decision you'll ever make. Here, you can sign right there. I'll give you a hint. Yeah. All right. Great. Here, I'll take this. You know what? You can keep the pen. <laughs> oh, man, you hit the jackpot, man. And to think you were just gonna scam the mom. Now you're coming away with the biggest score of your life. Her daughter, dang, you're lucky. God, calm down, all right? Sorry, man. I'm just saying, it seems like your losing streak is finally over. This is a lot of money. That it is. And if I keep on playing my cards right, there's gonna be a lot more where that came from. <laughs> Got it. Uh, speaking of playing cards, when are we going to the casino? Oh, Todd, my good man. As soon as this check clears, we're gonna hop on the first flight. And Helen's not gonna know anything about it. You wanna know why? Because what happens in Vegas? Stays in Vegas. <laughs> Sweet! I can't believe we're gonna have 125K oh, to play with. Whoa, 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 easy. It's gonna be a little less than that. Look, man, I gotta make a purchase. Hey, man, I gotta lock down my cash cow. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Look, man, when I become Jasmine's legal guardian, I'll be control of her money until she turns 18. <laughs> good afternoon, my good man. My name is Michael Keller. I have an account here. There's some overdraft fees, but I believe this deposit will cover that, and then some. Everything okay? Um, what's wrong? Don't you think it's a little strange that as soon as Mike got the check, he went on a business trip? And then I keep texting him and asking for the business account info and he just doesn't answer. I'm sure he's just busy, sweetie. Meeting with high-level execs. Everything is fine. I just get this really bad feeling about it. We're giving a lot of power to someone who's not even in our family. I don't think I want him managing my money anymore. Okay. If you're not comfortable, then I have okay. to respect that. At the end of the day, this is your career. I have to let you make your own decisions. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Ellen! I got a surprise for you, sweetie. Come on in here. Don't forget to tell him what we talked about. Ellen, you have made me the happiest man on earth. And I 
undoubtedly want to spend the rest of my life with you. Not only as your husband, but as the father to Jasmine. Will you marry me? Yes. Of course. Oh, honey, isn't this amazing? It's awesome. <laughs> but don't let this affect what we talked about. Oh, honey, no. Now is not the time. And he will be family. So this changes everything. You know what? I left the champagne in my car. Let me go get that. This is the best day of my life. I've got so much feeling bubbling inside And you seem surprised mm. I see your perfect smiles, perfect lies But all you do is I <laughs> Comparing loves and pictures of glorified depictions Your full-time job of dress up Want the pages, not the cover No, your soul's not made to rubber Show me you're not who you wish you were Who you wish you were I want you not who you pretend to be You feel too, I know it's not me Lose the filter, let yourself free Please just show me you All the human You won't look it in the eyes No A heart to weapon fear is alien So you try to disguise Competing with the photos Effects on effects you know Playing the tough guy's gonna eat you up Walk the pages, not the cover Done. I am done, man, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's all right, man. You've had plenty of L's in the past. We just need another good night at the casino after another one of those music checks comes in. No, you don't get it. There's no more checks. No, Jasmine's turning 18. That means that she doesn't need a legal guardian to take care of her finances. Oh, crap. Yeah. So what are you gonna do when she comes around asking for all that money you've been collecting from her? Oh, that's what I'm trying to figure out, man. I don't know what to do. I lost it. I lost it all. It's all coming crashing to an end. <sighs> Too bad you still can't be in charge of her finances. You know, like Britney Spears' dad did with Britney. Hold on. That's it. Conservatorship. No, listen to me. If she's deemed too unfit, maybe I can and I will convince a judge to be her conservator. Come on. Jasmine is a very smart girl, man. There's no way you're gonna convince any judge of that. If I can convince her mom to trust me, then maybe, just maybe, I can convince a whole court. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You still have that connection with the guy in the pharmacy? Yeah. Call him. Okay, so I was thinking about asking Mike to take some money out of your account to throw you an amazing birthday party. Yes, I love that. Also, I know I'm not supposed to be spending any of my money, but I literally haven't bought anything yet. So I was thinking of maybe taking some of the interest Mike says he earned and using it to buy a new car. Is that okay? You're 18, it's your money. Just be careful. Mike? Hey, Ellen. Here. Did you come in for this? 
have something to drink. Uh, this is Barry, a lawyer friend of mine, and I figured it would be appropriate if he was here for this. I was cleaning around the house, and I found these pills in Jasmine's room. Pills? I don't take pills. Well, they have your name on them. Uh, I don't understand. Mom, those aren't mine, I swear. Look, I was confused too at first, but then found her songbook, and I read some of the lyrics. Apparently, she's still depressed about, you know, her father. How dare you take that without asking? That's private. Give it back! Hey, hey, hey. Oh my God, she's clearly unstable. She tried to attack me. Hey, okay. She's clearly on something. He's lying. Okay. What exactly is your friend doing here? <clears throat> Barry specializes in conservatorship, okay? And this just might be the best thing for Jasmine. If she's addicted to pills, she's a threat to herself and to others. And it could be a disaster if she has access to her finances. And that's why I took Barry's legal advice to be her conservator. You did what? Mom, you can't let him do this. How could you do that without talking to us? I can't believe you. Look. Before she turns 18, and as her soon-to-be father... You're not my father! And you never will be! Trusting you was a huge mistake! Well, I'll see you two in court. Honey... I am so sorry that I put you in this position. You were right, and I should have listened to you. It's okay, Mom. We're gonna fight this. We're not gonna let them get away with it. These test results prove that she's been under the influence of prescription pills. Jasmine claims that the pills were planted in her room, but that doesn't explain how they got into her system. Mm, true. But uh, it was a very little amount. And let's not forget that Miss Ross agreed to the drug tests. She could have flushed them out of her system before taking that test. And let's not forget about the songbook. It was obviously a cry for help. And that's all that my client is trying to do. Mr. Keller is just trying to help her so that she doesn't go down a bad path like so many other young stars have done. Listen to any of my songs. I speak from my heart. Just because I write about how I'm feeling doesn't mean I am in need of help. Was the plaintiff finished? Go ahead. Miss Ross, are you sure you don't want a lawyer to help represent you in this case? Yes, Your Honor. It's hard to trust people these days. Your Honor, we're overlooking a key element here. Michael Keller is nothing but a con artist. That's a lie. Miss Ross, do you have any evidence of that? Yes, Your Honor. When my mother first met Michael, he claimed to be the financial consultant for many different successful people, including Richard Branson. He even showed us a photo of him with Mr. Branson. This is the photo that he showed us. And this is the original photo without Michael yeah. in it. He photoshopped himself. Thank you. Well, just because Mr. Keller isn't friends with any billionaires, it doesn't make him a con artist. Your Honor, that's not all. He claims that I'm on meds, but then I looked more closely at the label, and it's glued on. Underneath is a completely different name. This is all a setup. Your Honor, how do we know that she didn't make the fake label? I mean, besides the pills not being hers, then why did she have drugs in her system? I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. Well, this is very interesting. But, uh, Miss Ross, I just don't see any concrete proof that Mr. Keller is a con artist. And after listening to your music and reading your drug test, um, there are some things that are concerning. So do you have any more evidence for the court? Yes, Your Honor. A witness. A witness? Who, your mom? 
Your Honor, come on, every mother is gonna vouch for their child. I mean, she doesn't want to believe the truth. No, it's not my mother. It's Barry. Or should I say... God. I'm sorry, man. I got into some trouble and the cops said they would reduce my sentence if I would like, you know. Your Honor, this man's willing to testify against Michael Keller, AKA Brandon Myers, AKA Lester McGrath. He's a known con artist. We've been trying to track him down for years. You little rat. He may be a rat, but you, Michael, are a wolf. Just like you told me. Not everyone's who they pretend to be. Some are wolves in sheep's clothing. All right, I've heard enough. Bailiff, take Mr. Uh, Michael Keller, or whatever you call yourself, out of here. Your Honor. No, Your Honor, you can't do this. I know important people. Yeah, yeah, we all know important people. This case is dismissed. Yes, Mom, we did it. No, honey, you did it. Oh. You were so smart. I should have given you more credit. I just feel so awful. I shouldn't have trusted him. And I'm so sorry that I lost all your money. Mom, it's okay. I'm just so glad he's out of our lives now. This felt like a soap opera. Yeah. Somebody should write it into a novel. Yeah, or a song. Show me you not who you wish you were. I want you not who you pretend to be. You feel too, I know it's not just me. Lose the filter, let yourself free. Unbelievable. Where is this guy? He's taking forever. Come down. I'm sure he'll be here in a second. Oh, a sec. I'll be starved to death by then. Hey, Johnny, does it need to be that loud? Turn it down. Do you need to be that loud? People are literally staring. So what? Let them. I don't know these people. All right, sorry for the wait, folks. Well, can I get started for you folks today? Uh, yeah, well, we've been ready to order for about 10 minutes now. <laughs> oh, uh, my apologies. I, I was on break. What can I get started for you today? Uh, our son will have the spaghetti marinara child portion with um, garlic bread and a Sprite. And I will have a red sangria with um, a Caesar salad. All right. Can I have the dressing on the side? Sure thing, ma'am, yeah. Oh, and um, can you change the romaine for kale? No problem at all, thank you. And uh, for you, sir? Are you gonna write any of this down? Oh, no, I'll remember it. Are you sure? I'll remember it, babe. Okay. I will have the chicken fettuccine alfredo, and to drink, I'll have an old-fashioned bullet rye with three black cherries on a toothpick and no orange slice. Okay, sounds great. I'll uh, make sure to get all those things out for you. In the meantime, I'll bring your drinks. And don't forget the black cherries, very important. I just don't understand. Why can't you just write things down? Is this guy trying to give me anxiety or what? I swear, he doesn't get the order right. Uh... I am sure it is gonna be just fine. Oh, and um, don't forget, after this, we're gonna drop Johnny off at your mom's and go straight to the therapy. Oh, gosh, I can't believe that I signed up for this thing. It is a complete waste of time, not to mention a waste of 100 bucks. You agreed to it because you promised to work on your anger issues. I don't have anger issues. All right, one red sangria for you, ma'am, and... Uh, an old-fashioned with three cherries and a word slice. <laughs> what is this? This is not what I ordered. Oh, uh, you, you said three cherries and an orange slice, right? No, I said no orange slice, and I said three black cherries. Do these look black to you? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You see, if you would have just written down what I was telling you, instead of trying to memorize everything, you wouldn't have messed up. Uh, my apologies. I'll get a new one for you. I'm so sorry. It's really fine. It's fine. Unbelievable. Hi. I'm trying to help this guy out. I need you to calm down. I am calm. Oh, the trash. I mean, she waits until the fourth quarter of the most important moment of the game to ask me to take out the trash. And I don't understand what's the difference if I take it out, you know, an hour later. Maybe she's not asking you to take out the trash because it's an urgent matter, but maybe because she values feeling supported in managing the household responsibilities together. Yes. Thank you. Okay, well then, I value watching the game in peace. Is that too much to ask for? Oh. Okay. 
Let's change the topic. You mentioned that there was an incident at the restaurant. Restaurant? There was no incident at the restaurant. You slammed the table. The silverware almost fell to the ground. Everyone was staring at you. <laughs> See, there you go again. Acting so overdramatic, everyone. There was like three people in the restaurant. Overdramatic. You scared our Johnny. Is that really the kind of behavior you want to teach our son? Tim, there's no reason to get riled up. I do see you rising easily. Perhaps we can explore where that may come from? It's 100% his parents. Is that true, Tim? Did your parents fight a lot? Come on, make a play, come on! You still haven't taken the trash out, Harold? Not now, Dolores. Can't you see there's three minutes left in the game? It would take you one minute to take out the trash. Just stop your yapping, okay? I can't hear what's going on. I wouldn't on. be yapping if you just do what you're supposed to just do. Nag, 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 okay? Can you leave me alone for five seconds? Will you help me in the kitchen for one minute of your life? It's lost. I will help you back to the kitchen where you That's belong. That's it. None of this anymore. I'm not going to let you just sit here and watch the television. Tim. Tim. Did your parents fight a lot? Maybe. I mean, oh, so what? You know, I mean, they would argue one minute and then five minutes later, you know, everything was back to normal. But that's life, you know? And people get over it. It's water under the bridge. No. Sometimes there are long-term consequences mm -hmm. to being subjected to that much anger. Oh, yeah? Like what? Huh? My father would be turning over in his grave if he knew that I was spending $100 an hour to hear my wife complain about the trash. This is absolutely ridiculous. Tim, why don't we try taking it down a notch? No, 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 I can't. I can't do this. I can't have you two tag teaming against me. Tag teaming you. Tag teaming me. I feel like a punching bag right now. You're the punching bag. I am the punching bag. You know, and until there's some real consequences, about my anger issues. I, I'm, I'm done with therapy. I'm done. Look, I'm, I'm going to the car. Do you see what I'm dealing with? I honestly don't know what to do anymore. His anger is never physical, is it? No, no, he's, um, he's a lot of bark, but no bite, I promise. I would leave in a heartbeat if it got to that. Well, based on what I saw today, at some point there will be some serious consequences to his anger issues. There already are. He's just the last one to see it. I agree. But he'll have to face it sooner or later. And when he does, I want you to have him open this in your backyard. What is it? The lesson he needs to learn. Hey, Tim, are the TPS reports done? I need them for the meeting later. Yes, I am aware, but I have a lot on my plate right now, so. I understand, but the reports are crucial for the meeting. Can you try prioritizing them? Can't you see that I'm swamped right here? I'll get to it when I can. Okay, sorry. I was just trying to make sure everything runs smoothly. You know, you're always poking around, Sarah. Always trying to micromanage. I don't need you breathing down my neck. You know, when the last time I checked, you're not my boss. Barbara is. I'm not trying to micromanage you. We're a team, and I thought we could help each other out. Oh, well, that is just so touching. Look, the office hero. <laughs> Always trying to help everyone out. I was just trying to remind you of your task, that's all. Well, I'm not a kid, and I don't need reminding. But congrats, Sarah. You succeeded to get on my last nerve. Not yours. Give it back to him. Hey. Is everything okay? You're not usually off this early. 
What's going on? I got fired. What? It's okay. Look, I'm actually glad about it. I mean, that place was so toxic anyway. You know, I should have quit a long time ago. Why did you get fired? Tim? Tim! Because I lost my temper. But it wasn't my fault. It was just Sarah. It's this girl. She thinks she, she acts like she's my boss. She's always giving me a hard time. So I got upset and Barbara didn't like it. See, this is the real consequences we've been talking about in therapy. Tim, this has gone too far. Didn't you hear what I just said? I said it wasn't my fault. It's never your fault. Take responsibility. I warned you, if you want to play, you get your own choice. Don't take my grandsons. What is your mother doing? Defending Johnny, what else? Hey, hey, lady. Don't be yelling at my kid. Oh, heck no. No, you let no, him play, listen. take care. It's my mom you're talking to, buddy. Well, maybe your mama should learn not to be yelling at people's children. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you should be a better parent to your kid. Oh, your voice. Come on, let's get out of here. That's it. Walk away, I buddy. I'm so sorry. What happened? It was him. Me? What? I was defending my mom and my son. Yeah, but you took it too far and you didn't have to. I'm sorry, but you guys have to go. Are you serious? Yes, I'm very sorry, but you guys need to go. What? Are you hearing what? I... <sighs> I, I, will, I will get him. You guys need to. You lost your job, Tim. On the same day that you got kicked out of the play center. All because of your anger issues. You don't see anything wrong with that? I should have handled it better, man. Thank you. Now that you can finally see that, I, I guess you can have this. What is this? I'm not sure. The therapist said to give it to you once you started to realize the consequences of your temper. What am I supposed to do with this? I have no idea. Um, but, oh, good, there's a note here. Let's see. Um, hammer a nail into the fence every time anger issues arise. One more than a month goes by without a single nail, call me. Is this guy serious? I don't know. All right. You can give it a try. Hmm. <sighs> it's not funny. I know, honey. It's just, it's been a lot. It hurts. I love you. Come on, let's try again.
I did it. Mm -hmm. A month has gone by, and not a single nail. I am so proud of you, Tim. I can't wait to tell the therapist about all of your progress. The therapist? We don't need him anymore. I'm better now. Well, we aren't going to him. He's, um... Ah, oh, this guy. That's a lot of nails. Yeah, well, I mean, the good news is Tim is doing much better. Tim hasn't lost his temper in, I mean, a while now. Yeah, that's right, you know, so... Sad to say that we're probably gonna have to end the therapy session, but it was great seeing you. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. What? I agree with you, Tim. You don't need me anymore. But there's one more thing I'd like you to do. Take out all the nails. For what? You'll see. You know, I was just starting to like you, man. Now you got me making me do all this kind of stuff. I mean, who do you think you are? Mr. Miyagi with the wax on and the wax off? I mean, what's next? You're gonna make me dig a hole and then fill it back up? You know, this is really turning out to be a waste of time. Thank you. Come on. My son appreciates you. You know, I have wanted a pool, so if you want to have him dig a hole, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. There. Are you happy now? In our last session, you mentioned that your parents fighting all the time was no big thing. Five minutes later, everything would return back to normal. Water under the bridge. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, it's true. You know, people argue and then everything goes back to normal. So what? The point I'm trying to make is that even if you take out the nails, the holes are still there. What are you talking about? <laughs> Babe, I, I think what the doctor's trying to say is that there's permanent damage left behind when you get that angry. Wait a minute, what, what, slow down. What? Okay. Fine, I'll be right there. It was my mom. Something happened at a play center. We gotta go. What happened? My kid got hit is what happened. Mom, what did you do? It wasn't me. Johnny hit him. With pineapple, just how you like it. Oh, um, thanks, Anna. But Coach doesn't want us having anything heavy. He, uh, he needs us in tip-top shape for next week's game. Mm -hmm. Yo, speaking of that, we got to test out our new Air Jordans on the court after school. Ooh, yeah. Let's see how they hold up. ka -chow. Ooh! I'll go ahead and, uh, text Robbie right now, see if he's down for some two-on-two. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. do that, right. do that. Just imagine that one day we're going to be sponsored by Nike. <laughs> Get to wear the shoes for free. Yes. Better yet, imagine one day we'll be getting the checks from Nike. Yes, show me the money. Justin, I thought me and you were going to hang out after school. Um, it's not me and you. It's you and I. Sorry, you, you know what I meant. No, you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, it's not a big deal if I just hang with the boys instead, right? No, but... Aren't you supposed to get that decision letter from Cornell any day? I want to be there with you when you open it. Cute, Justin. Plus, we still have to figure out how we're going to do the long distance thing if we really want it to work out. <clears throat> <clears throat> Babe, we have plenty of time to figure all that out. I'll be moving to New York, not Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that. We'll but... cross that bridge when we get there, Hannah. Can't we just enjoy the time that we have? Yeah. But why can't we just... Okay, so then let's not worry about it. And let's make the best of it. <clears throat> oh, um, Robbie just texted me. Yeah, uh, he said a hoop just opened up. You guys down? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Wait, but what about lunch, guys? Yeah, I'm sorry, I know. Cl clean it up for us, though. Um, you can just eat lunch by yourself. And besides, don't you have to worry about the costumes for the drama club or something? Yeah, but if I don't see you after school, when are we going to hang out? We'll connect. I'll text you later. Enjoy that pineapple. 
Hey, Hannah. Did you get a chance to finish the Mercutio costume for Kevin last night? Yes. There you go. And I should have the Juliet one done after this weekend. Dude, this is amazing. Just like all your work. Oh, thanks. I decided to pad stitch the under collar here by hand, and then I added extra layers of cotton for the shoulder pads. I am so happy with the way it turned out. <laughs> oh, I actually have to talk to Justin. Um, I'll text you later. Here comes Queen Buzzkill. Hey, babe. You never texted back. What, what happened last night? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, we were busy celebrating. I got into Cornell. Really? That's amazing. Why did you say anything? Uh, I I'm gonna go air up the ball. Me too. <laughs> What's with them? Nothing. We're just stressed out about our game next week. Well, at least the biggest stress is over with now. Oh my god, I can't believe you did it. After all those nights staying and studying, we can finally make up for the time lost. Mm -hmm. And now that we know Cornell is a for sure thing, we can start planning for the future. Wait, oh my god, this is so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, about that. Justin. So, what's going on? Okay, um, I've been thinking, and I don't think it's fair to either of us to try and do this long distance thing. What do you mean? Well, you're gonna be a senior in high school, and I'm gonna be in college. Yeah, but it'll only be a year. And then I'll be in the city for fashion school, and we can be- Come on, Hannah. Let's be serious. Do you really think you have the grades to get into fashion school? Last time I checked, you only had a 3.2 GPA and got what? An 1100 on your SAT? Okay, well the admissions panel takes your portfolio into consideration more than anything. And I've done every costume for the drama club, the marching band outfits, the- Yeah, okay, but any school that doesn't take your grades into consideration probably isn't a school worth getting into. I'm a legacy at Cornell. And even I had to maintain a 4.0 GPA and get a 1520 on my SAT just to have a shot. What are you saying? I'm saying that even if you did somehow manage to get into a real school, I need to be with somebody that takes their future seriously. Be realistic. What are the odds of you having a successful career with a fashion degree? Well, it's more unorthodox, but... Listen, <laughs> don't get me wrong. You're great. Gorgeous. Probably the hottest girlfriend I'll ever have. But I need somebody that brings something more to the table. Something more than just <laughs> random doodles. Someone who can actually get into a school like Cornell, not Parsons. Are you breaking up with me? I just don't see this being a long-term thing. You understand, right? You said we'd be together forever. You gave me this promise, right? Well, whatever is meant to be, will be. Who knows, maybe one day we'll both end up in New York together. But for now, this is just how it's gotta be. I'm sorry. Thanks for doing this. I know hemming my dress for senior sock hop is a weird favor to ask. No, not at all. I'm happy to help. <laughs> uh, so are you gonna go? I don't think so. I have no one to go with. Please, I know a million guys who would die to take you. You're one of the prettiest girls in school. Thanks, but there's only one person I really want to go with, and he's already moved on to someone else. Whatever happened is his loss. Is it? I mean, I did a deep dive on her. She was class president, prom queen, and now she's pre-med at Cornell. And to top it off, she has that new Dior saddlebag that's sold out everywhere. She's literally perfect. Who <laughs> wants perfect? You're great the way you are. And anyone would be lucky to date you. Anyone isn't Justin. He hasn't talked to me in months. Clearly, this is the type of girl he wants to be with. 
You know, if I could just be more like her. Oh my gosh. Wait. That's totally it. What? I just have to prove that I'm serious about my future and get into some hoity-toity college. Then Justin will want me back. And not go to Parsons? I don't know, Han. This seems like a lot of effort for a guy who dumped you five minutes after getting into his dream school. And you know what they say, don't make someone a priority when all you are is an option to them. And please don't change your future just for him. Well, I don't have to go, I just have to get in. But there is one small problem. Which is? I don't have the grades or the SAT scores to get into Cornell. Maybe he was right all along. Maybe I'm just not good enough or smart enough. Uh, no. Okay, listen. Since you've been helping me and the drama club out so much, maybe I can return the favor. Even though I hate their ugly mascot. What do you mean? I mean, I've been tutoring since seventh grade and I got a 1550 on my SATs last year. Are you serious? This isn't just a pretty face, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you want to get into an Ivy, we have to start yesterday. You need at least a 3.75 on your GPA and at least a 1500 on your SATs. It won't be easy, but the reward will be worth it. Are you up for it? Yes, yes, I'll do whatever it takes to get Justin back. Uh, no, by reward I mean you getting into... You know what? Never mind. That works too. <laughs> okay. okay. Dress in the... Oops. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, close. This would be three to the power of two. Very good, T. Great job. You're doing amazing. Proud of you. Very good. Amazing. That's so good. Girls, you're doing great. Alright, you're gonna have to complete this page and this page. passage indicates that the assumption made by gift givers in lines 41 to 44 may be A. Insincere, B. Unreasonable, C. Incorrect, or D. Substantiated. B. Alright. <laughs> Next question. Hala, I'm so proud of you. Very good. get better news than I did. I'm so sorry you didn't get into Yale. It makes no sense. That's okay. Let's just focus on you right now. You've been working so hard for this. Okay. The moment of truth. My whole future rests in the next page. Oh God, I can't do it. Okay, I will. Well? I'm sorry, Han. Are you kidding? I got rejected. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to start embracing the big red bear as your mascot because you got in! Oh my god. I got into Cornell! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Do you know what this means? You can study fashion in an Ivy League school? Oh yeah, that too. But I can also get Justin back. <laughs> right, Justin. What? It's just, I know this started off as a way for you to prove something to him, but along the way, I think you proved something to someone more important. Yourself. <laughs> and besides, do you really wanna date someone who has a new girlfriend every month? Justin doesn't have a girlfriend. Him and Valerie are just friends. I don't think you saw the photo he posted today. Her name's Erica. I already did the research for you. She graduated valedictorian and her oh, family sorry, owns... I don't want to hear it. Alright. 
Well, congrats again. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'll see you in class. Hannah? Justin. Uh, hold on. Hi. Um, long time no see. How have you been? Uh, good. What are you doing here? Oh, you probably didn't see my Instagram. I got into Cornell. Fashion design and management major. You got into Cornell? Yeah. I just moved in a few weeks ago. I live in McClintock. What about you? Where do you live? Oh, um, I'm actually moving back home. I sort of flunked out. Got wrapped up in the college parties and all the distractions. I'm really sorry. Yeah. It's all good. Well, good luck with everything. Wait, would you maybe want to go out to lunch or something? Been thinking about you a lot lately and I feel like I really messed up. I'd love to be able to take you out again. Aren't you with, um, what's her name, Erica or Valerie? I, I've, I've lost track. What? No, that was just a fling. Nothing serious. Nothing like we were. So what do you say? That's sweet. But I can't. I'm busy. New boyfriend? No. New job. I don't just go to school. I work at Nike. And I am running late, so... Wait, what? Do you have like a free internship or something? No. I get paid. I work for their design department. I come up with ideas for new shoes. Kind of like these. Pretty cool, right? Wow. I've always wanted to work with Nike. I guess that won't be happening now that I'm off the team. Well, I, I gotta go. Um, tell your parents I say hi. Wait, what about dinner? Maybe next week? Sorry, Justin, but I'm not gonna make someone a priority when all I am is an option to them. So, me and you, oh, sorry, you and I will never happen. See ya. <laughs> oh, oh, how did that feel? <laughs> oh my God, even 10,000 times better than I ever would have imagined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're at Cornell with me. Oh, <laughs> me too. And you know, I'm actually warming up to the bear. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> what was wrong with you tonight? What do you mean? Well, my friends came over, and you were nowhere to be found. You know how rude that was? Why do you always have to be so inconsiderate? Why do you always have to be so inconsiderate? Inconsiderate. Inconsiderate. Man, I'm starving. My stomach is growling. Oh, I am so sorry. I made pasta. <laughs> um, let me see your plates. And I will bring the bread in just a second, okay? Wait a minute. Shouldn't we wait on your wife before we dig in? Oh, no. Please. <laughs> it's okay. And here is the bread. Hey, uh, do you mind getting me some hot sauce? Oh, yeah, yeah. Honey, go get him a hot sauce. Sure, in a second. Mm. Mm. Here's the sauce. Thank you. Mm. Do you have any more napkins? Oh, yes, of course. Honey, can you go get the napkins? Thanks. Sure.
We're gonna find the wine. Oh, no, no. <laughs> You're our guest. Honey, you know where it's at. Can you bring some more wine for everyone? A little bit back with it. Well, guys, the game's about to start. Mm. You have cable, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's in the room. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 just leave everything there. She'll take care of it. Alright man, thank you again. Good night Thanks for coming. Alright guys, see ya. Good night. What was wrong with you tonight? What do you mean? Oh, my friends came over, and you were nowhere to be found. You know how rude that was? Why do you always have to be so inconsiderate? Why do you always have to be so inconsiderate? Inconsiderate? Inconsiderate?